So I was talking to Yona here about practicing good mental habits for your own well-being and it might seem like an obvious thing or it might seem completely rare to some of you but one of the things I was saying to him that's really important is to practice being grateful for other people's success. You know, sometimes you may look on Facebook and you may have someone who's like painting this perfect picture of their life. Big home, flash boat, trophy wife or trophy husband. You know, everything's going great. If you have a sinking feeling when you see that, oh fuck, you know, then you need to reinvent yourself. What you need to do when you see that person succeeding is go, wow, I'm so stoked to see them succeeding. Because when they succeed, you actually also succeed. Because we're all like a big sort of continent of land. We're all joined together. We're all affected. What happens with you affects me. What happens with me affects you. So if that person, you know, who's a part of this big continent, we're all one, if they fail or even die, then that continent becomes a little bit smaller. And we want the continent of land to be strong and healthy and grow vibrant uh, food and life and people and animals and everything. But it's got to it's gotta have this thing where we all succeed, we all thrive. We don't want our brothers to not thrive. So part of the mental well-being that we set in our own minds starts with hoping for our brothers and our sisters to succeed way beyond their wild dreams and watch them flourish. This is a healthy way for us to be. And if you can practice this regularly, you will in turn flourish and thrive. Yeah, say that four times as fast as you can. Flourish and th thrive. Flourish and thrive. Flourish and thrive. Flourish and thrive. Flourish and thrive. Well done, eh? You try and say that's a hard one. Pause the video and say it four times as fast as you can. Flourish and thrive. Flourish and thrive. Flourish and thrive. Just got back from the houseboat and. When you see the big red vehicle here, you know that it's time for smoke hole with Arbert. <laughs> Arbert. <laughs> right, good to see you, man. <laughs> yeah, you're looking well. Thank you. Yeah, I've come at the right time. I just rocked up the house and he's got his smoke hole kit, so uh, we're straight in it. Uh, what I was gonna, thinking when I was driving up the driveway, holy shit, you've already got the paper on, bro, this yeah, morning. Wrapping. Yeah, you've already wrapped it. No. I'll look at it in a minute. I'll do some wrapping later. Could talk about the girl, she's the only one I want. Never better in the world. I said, come on, baby, come on down to me. Don't mess me around, just set me free. There you go, that's wrapping. <laughs> <laughs> White boys in their 50s trying to rap. Boy! Well, I can't rap. <laughs> okay, bro, two minutes, clock's ticking. Far away, the story. So I was born to some foreign parents, both of them foreign, so I came up with a slightly different upbringing in Christchurch. Was always a bit of a misfit, was a great mate of yours. <laughs> Never fitted in, always, skin colour always looked different. Yeah. Grew up, did an apprenticeship, was the right thing to do, that's what boys did back then. Got the wanderlust, had to leave the country, disappeared for 30 years, lived overseas in Sweden, travelled in different countries, learnt different languages and got more experience at doing all variations of the same trade. Had a lot of good friends, have had a lot of good friends and still have a lot of good friends and um, just kind of wandered around and there was a point when I stopped which was in Cairns for 20 odd years and then came back here and it's just carried on and it's slightly different but it's just carried on. Have uh, an enjoyable thing I do in life, have a relationship that nourishes me, close family and friends and can't finish the story because I'm not dead yet. <laughs> that was actually that was two minutes. What's your life story, Bruno? Well, Bruno was uh, hey, out, of here, <laughs> out of there, here. Bruno. Out of here. Go on. Go on. Go on. <laughs> well, here you go, boy. Bruno's life story is um, he is actually pure Dogo Argentino. Uh, he was bred from a pup we had called Asia, and his father was called Toby, who was a pure bred Dogo. And he's in his 11th year, he's got cancer, he's had cancer cut out, and he hasn't got much time left, and I'm going to do one last mission with him. Like a couple of old dogs, it's something I want to do, I want to hang out with him. So I'm going to make this little cart with bicycle wheels. Put him on it? No, not put him on, he's going to tow it. So okay. he's just going to walk slowly, and in it we'll have a few things. Yeah. And we'll just take our time, I don't know how many days it'll take, but something I want to do for a long time. Where are you going to go? Uh, probably around by the Mott River so we can catch a few trout. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, along one of those cycle paths though, yeah, so we can walk yeah. on the actual path because there's all these paths everywhere. So that's his life story. So we're just about at this point now where we're going to move ahead with this window and door. So I've wrapped this, I've done all my final 
connecting and stuff like that. I've had a lot of brackets and stuff going on. I don't have to put bracing on this wall because it's on the same line as that inside wall where I put the bracing ply in your bedroom. Right, so what I did do is I made sure I connect the top plates together at a joint. So I've strapped them and screwed them so that those bracing on that wall is connected to this wall here. Gotcha. And because I've got a window and a, and a big door, I can't get any real value of bracing anyway. There's too many, there's not enough full sheets there or anything. So that's connected to the bedroom, that's its bracing. So I'll put a little bit of bracing on that back wall Yep. before I clad that. But now I'm just gonna work on this. So I've started the wrap. I'm gonna to have to put little dwangs in here and there to get the top of the weatherboards and stuff like that. So that's a fiddly bits and pieces of work. Yep. And then I can finish the wrap up the top and then do all that taping and all that sort of making the sills and that tedious stuff that you have to do for the wrap. But then I can put the door and the window in and then chuck the weatherboards on. Wow. Here. So that's the angle that I'm waiting for. We've got a hold up with the window for this wall because the same company is actually making a shower screen for my place and we've got to hold up with that. Oh, really? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we still can't shower in our new bathroom, but that's all right. It's before Christmas. Six to eight weeks out from Christmas, it's just chaos. Yeah, it's yeah. always like that. Every single year I've seen the same thing. People say to me, oh, they'll say to me in sort of the beginning of November, literally the beginning of November, will it be ready by Christmas? And I go, well, we're going to have a supply issue. And they go, we haven't even ordered anything yet. I go, that's the supply issue. Yeah, right. You know, that's it. We haven't ordered. As soon as we can't get anything guaranteed before Christmas, eight weeks out. So Yeah, it's funny that, eh? Christmas people want stuff done. Oh, I couldn't give a bollocks. I can't wait to see you put this window in, bro. This big one. Yeah, well, this will be probably, yeah. this will be this week for sure. Wow. Yeah. Oh, exciting. Yeah. So, mm. yeah. So, anyway, the tin's ready for that wall, which is cool. Great. Is That's it? so fast, those guys at Contour. We're doing zinc loom on the outside. That's right. We're going to run it horizontally. I'm actually going to put a bit of a cavity on it. Yep. The wall's so wobbly yep. on that, the line that... I built the inside to the right line and the outside I'm just going to pack out. Okay. So I'm going to pack it out with battens. I'm going to wrap it first and it will technically be a cavity. Okay. Which is what you do when you have horizontal corrugated iron. Tell us about the cost difference between cladding it with uh, pine and cladding it with a zinc loom. Well, actually, I priced it assuming that we were going to get about probably six or seven runs of weatherboards out. So I only priced to get about another seven or whatever it was. That was about $780 worth. Right. And then with the zinc loom and the flashings was about two hundred and ninety dollars. Wow, wow, big saving, and it's great zinc loom, eh? It looks yeah, awesome. it's just brilliant, you know. Yeah. Even if later on you go, oh, I'd like to have an extra um, PowerPoint or something yeah. like that. Put it on, unscrew it, lift oh, it up. It's gonna be so cool. It's yeah. gonna be so cool. You good boy, eh? Oh, he's a good dog, aren't you? Eh? Good dog. Little pace squeaking in his kennel. Good boy. Getting old. Let's pan around here and show you these little. Little guys, can you get come out, B? You gonna behave yourself? There you go. Go away, B. Stay here. Well, uh, Holly's uh, done with pace. He's back with me now. So, there you go. Woo! Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. And of course, Popo. Hey, Po. Come on, Po. Welcome. Good girl. As soon as I let. Pace and B, they are gone. God knows where they're gone. Could be over at Harry's. They could be over at Neil's next door at the Cherries. They could be up at Murray and Mary's. They could be up at Dylan's A-Frame. Bugger do I know where they're gone, but they're gone. They're certainly not my front paddock. I've got to get these bales lifted because the grass will be dying underneath them soon. If anybody wants to buy some baleage, let me know. I've got about 130 baleages here. Big bastards, they're like huge. And I don't have any soft arms on the tractor to lift them and shift them, otherwise I'll, I'll bugger the plastic on the outside. Uh, so if you do know anybody that wants to buy something, let me know, because they're for sale. Not a small dog in sight. The main thing is they're not going down here on the highway. Uh, could be chasing a hare over at Harry's somewhere. I can't see him. Where's Pace, where's B, hey? Where are they gone? No dog up there. Where are they gone, Po, hey? Pace cup! Be cup! It's Murray's up the end there, but I can't even see they're up there. Where the hell are they, eh? Hey, Bigsy? Where are they gone? Looking down the rows of apples. Two dogs go away to get us bad news because they can pack on stuff. Well, they're not up here either. Bugger. This is the problem with long range finders when you let them off at home. 
two of them together, they cause absolute trouble when they go for miles. They could be on any of my neighbours' properties now, stretching out their cat or uh, livestock, which um, they probably they wouldn't touch livestock, but it's just you just don't know when two dogs get together. They they pack, the pack mentality going, and all training goes out the window. It's my fault. I should have put a chain on when I let them go. I knew that. I was just hopeful they'd stay in, but they didn't. Also, they haven't getting enough hunting, so they're getting bored. Well, this is the front view up uh, where Pace was living. When we come up here just to see if the dogs are running around here. There's all this bush down here they can go down into and cause all matter of trouble. I pan around slowly. Man, it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Can't see any birds working. I see one boat fishing straight out there. I don't see Pace and B anywhere. You're not supposed to be in there, Bruno. That's not our property. Come on. Bruno, come. Bigsy. Oh, there's Pace there. Pace. Pace, come. Where have you been? B, come. I can see B too. B, come. Oh, at least I think I can. Where have you been? You've been chasing something, haven't you? Yeah, B. B's not far away. B, come. B, come. Where have you been, eh? Come here. He's been digging something up. Be come, be come. Burrowing a rabbit. You can see he's been down in a burrow. He's got dirt all over his mouth. He's full of dirt. He's been like, yep, yeah, they've, they've found a rabbit burrow somewhere. That's what's going on there. Get him behind, B. Pace come, pace, pace. He's got, uh, pace come. Yeah, you've been down in a rabbit burrow too, haven't you? Hey, eh? heal. Yeah, need to hydrate himself after that excessive running, I would say. Yeah, they barely need a pig hunt. They shouldn't be uh, like so long without a hunt. It's been over a week now. It's been too hot. And really they need to get out and hunt for once or twice a week. A high prey drive dog. Two or three walks a day is just not enough. They need some serious hunting. Good dogs. Heal up. Go on boy. Really come. Hot tired dogs. It was a big run. Not ideal. Not ideal at all having dogs run away and not knowing what they're chasing or where they're at. Lucky to get them all back. Lucky nobody's been hurt, but it's possibly just a rabbit. But still, these guys here, take them down to the lake, call them off, and uh, then we'll uh, give them their dinner, some posse yum. Uh, they had their exercise now. Murray's hauling cattle, having a pee, and staying under the shade of that pine tree there. And the old bull spends most of his time right on the fence line as close to the cows as he can. Bigsy looking at these native ducks. Nice place to cool off after a big run, eh? Well, dogs, you're all back. Had a drink. The chickens know what time it is. And Bruno know what time it is, don't you, Bruno, eh? That time. I don't recommend you uh, feed posse yum to your chickens. I mean, you'll get fantastic eggs out of it, and they'll love you for it. And they just love it, man. They love it, the ducks love it, everybody loves it, but it is for the dogs. I just felt like spoiling the maypo. I'm gonna spoil you in a minute too. It's a premium dog tucker, and I reckon that's why Bruno's now in his 11th year for a large breed dog. That's very rare. He's not very good at catching, we'll try, mate. Here, Bruno, eat up. Yeah, not flash, mate. Anyway. Take him to the shade. Smart dog. In summertime, I decreased the feed. So that for Poe, she'll get through a whole day on that. It's very economical, the stuff. Eat up, because it's just such compact, nutritious feed for the size of it. No water added, eh, dogs? Wintertime dogs eat a lot more because they're just burning energy to keep warm. This time of the year, though, they're not, are they? Unless they're chasing bloody rabbits. You take the bigger one, mate. There you go. That's for you in your box. There you go. 
he's a nice gentle eater this dog well he used to take little bites but he's actually starting to get bigger bites I think it's since I put pace in the box he thinks pace is gonna eat it but pace won't these guys can share their food together without any fights so pretty good that went fast Poe hey that went fast girl you're a good dog aren't you mate eh need to get you out for a hunt again soon eh good girl good girl Hey, chicken's getting on with your posse, I'm still enjoying it. It's like a biscuit. Sharing it well. Looks like Murray's been doing some spraying. Anyway, yeah, currently the house truck is acting as a makeshift kitchen for myself, my son, six women, well actually five now, one's gone. And uh, today I'm going to cook up this snapper here, which uh, I cooked with firewood mat. That was some fuck me dead. Got a bloody uh, eyebrows burnt there. Smash a bit of this in. Olive oil. And I'll let somebody uh, who's cleverer than me as far as cooking goes in the comment section explain why you put a bit of butter in with the olive oil. It stops it doing a lot, guys. So while it's doing its thing, look at this uh, little snapper. It's probably about 27, it's not very big centimetres. And this nice high carbon steel. Knife made by Simon Walker. It's a kitchen knife. He gave it to me. It's got its own sheath too. There's the sheath there. The sheath is right beside a girl's hair tie. This is what I'm living with right now. Lady stuff everywhere. I'm gonna diamond score this. You've seen me use it before. Cajun seasoning is just great with well everything in life really. Gonna be very, very uh oh, I don't know, put heaps on I guess you say. Bit of his eye because we'll be eating that. Smack him over. Very generous is the word I was looking for. Lift your foot up, mate, because I want to get in that big crack there too. There we go. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? And now straight into the pan. Pan is pretty hot. And there's the desired sound. This is why we call these fish panties, because they just fit in the pan. People say, oh, it's too small. No, it's legal. It's big enough my pan, I'll bloody take it and eat it. Right. The thing with this here is this, I'll talk to you while we do that side, it's going to be that quick. Don't turn your fish over and over if you diamond scored it, because when you diamond score it, you cut through all the muscle and connective tissue, and basically what you're doing is making it so it'll fall apart if you turn it, because there's no structure to it, and you end up with a crumble of fish, so only turn it once. I'm trying to find some things to put in my uh, dish, I want a little bit more of the silver beak down here. Um, I want to get some kale. This kale is just about done its dash. I mean, it's getting pretty old. Still getting a bit off it. Got a kale and spring onion. Behind all the tomatoes, look at these tomatoes. The girls have tied up for me. I've done a bloody good job. I'm going to take out down here. Now, I should be cutting this, not snapping it, cutting it. But hey, that's uh, the way we're going to roll today. Look at that nice long spring onion. And also, beetroot leaves. I love them. Take one off there, and uh, one here. Delicious. Poor old beetroot's losing all his leaves. Good tucker. Greens. How you doing, mate? All looking pretty good. This has had about, oh, not long. Probably, geez, look at that. Maybe five minutes. The time it took me to get some vegetables. We're going to turn it over this side. Whoa. Mmm. It is so good. There's plenty of fat all over it. Man. That is going to be delicious. I've given the other side about two minutes. I think it'll be enough. We're going to get out one piece. Oh, we're lucky. We're lucky. Yeah. That's pretty good. So I'm just going to rest old mate on the plate here and saute my vegetables. Doesn't that look great? You can just like break those little pieces off. Be delicious. I don't recommend doing this guys, you can have a fire. I cut up one tomato to go in with this. And get you straight in. Cool. So I've just stuck a wee bit of salt in there. Going to saute those very lightly. So Arb's having his lunch. I've got a lemon off the tree, uh, an organic lemon. I'm going to cut that in half and put on my fish. 
How good does that look? But we don't want pips. No sir, we don't want pips. It's really nice. I really love being on this keto diet. I'll tell you why. Everything just tastes bloody good. I'm gonna pop that in there. It tastes good. You know what you're eating is good for you. There's no sugar and no shit. No refined bloody crap. It's all just wholesome food. Now everything on the uh, plate here I caught or grew myself, except the tomato. I actually bought that tomato because mine aren't quite ready yet. And the olive oil and the salt. And the butter, those things I bought. So olive oil, salt, butter and tomato. All the veggies, the fish, the lemon, the rest from home. And eventually I'll be completely self-sufficient. And that's the day's lunch and it probably took me about 10 minutes to make. Probably 10 minutes all up. How's your appetite, bro? Oh, you're a gentleman, you get me a chair. Last of a dying breed, Arbors. You wish me on buses, mate. Get up for old ladies. Just straight away. Come on, love. Yep. Yeah, and have my seat. Come on. Well, that's you, bro. The last of a dying breed, a gentleman. I feel very, very bad eating this in front of Arb because I know that it was much better than his lunch. Way better. <laughs> Do you want a bit, Arb? No. Do you really want a bit? No, it does, mate. It doesn't. See, he's happy with his salmon sandwiches. I've got to give him some. Oh, mate. Oh. You enjoy it, bro. Oh, bro. Cajun seasoning. Nice. Mmm. Juicy. Just falling off the bone. Falling off the bone. That Cajun seasoning really makes fish taste great. Oh, it's good, bro. Anyway, I'm going to chow this down and then I'm going to ask Ab for some, some tips on how to... What? Change your uh, derailleur cable on your mountain bike. Change your what? Your <laughs> derailleur cable on your mountain bike. Ask him how to change your derailleur cable on your mountain bike. No, I'm not going to do that because when I need to change it, I'll just give it to Arb and he'll do it for me. Yeah. So I said to Arb, I'm going to hit him with a question about something he knows nothing about to get his spit on it because, and it's a really interesting one for you men that have got children that have broken up with your partner and she's taken them away from you, which happens too much. And one of the things that I keep hearing from men is the same story. Bro, I've lost all rights to see her for no good reason. Generally, women win that battle in court and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. Gets cut off a lot and, and then it gets worse. One of my guys that I was in contact with two years ago took his own life after that. And it's a common one in Australia particularly and New Zealand. So, Arb's never had children that we know of. Not that we know of. Not that we know of. I'm pretty sure you... <laughs> You haven't, and um, but what would your advice be to a young bloke that's fighting the, the court, fighting the system, where his partner's become his ex and she's taken the kids away? How would you deal with that today if it was you? I would focus on what I wanted. So what I wanted to do then would be to see my kids and have access to my kids. Yeah. So I'd focus on that, and I potentially would alter my behaviour so it's deemed acceptable by the courts so that I could get away with it. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like I would, I wouldn't do anything too emotional where they'd say, ah, he's violent or he's reacted the wrong way or anything. I would constantly remain focused on the fact that what I want to achieve is I want to be able to see my kids. Yeah, so sometimes I wouldn't say the truth about how I feel or about what I want publicly or anything like that where someone could use it against me. I would just be pretty diplomatic and I would probably outwardly take some shit from the ex-partner if it's you know not a nice breakup you yeah. know mm -hmm. so i'd take some shit and i'd just go no nah, i'm not going to react because what i want to do and what i want to get out of this is i want to have contact yeah man so wow. that's I'd, I'd keep that as the big picture in front of me the yep. whole time and that would always affect how i act that is brilliant advice for a bloke that's never been in that situation I have been in that situation and you bang on the money, you bang on the money. I have a very uh, good friendship with my ex today, I was with her last week and I caught up and we did a bit of cooking together, had a bit of fun, we made a video out of it, didn't go so well on the on the site because everybody assumes I'm still uh, like that with my previous, I won't go into that too much, which I'm not, but anyway, that aside, the other thing I would say to you men is this, when you do get your children and you have them, Never ever say anything bad about your ex, ever. Never talk badly about, not only your ex, but nobody to your children. The reason you shouldn't talk badly to your 
children about your ex is they're carrying half her genes. So you're basically dissing them if you diss her. And the other thing is that you know my children are all back with me now and, and there's a lot of love and a lot of communication and transparency about the things I've done wrong in the past or you know what I could have done better. So we keep everything honest and open and there's there's a good flow. If I'd had a bad battle with their mother when they when she took them away from me, um, at the time she went to the North Island up to Paikakariki. Um, but I didn't. She was very, very good at allowing me to see them. I actually stayed at her home and we were always civil and I'm very grateful for her being that way. But I like your I like your uh, advice. Sorry about the wind blowing the foam, guys, there'll be a lot of audio blown out on this. The wind suddenly came up. Anyway, that was uh, lunch with a not, not smoko, lunch. Good good natural wisdom there, bro. Well that's lunch. There you go, ladies. Have a bit of fish, eh? Make that into eggs. You like lemon? Yeah, that's better, isn't it? Bit of snapper. Come on, share it. There's heaps there. Share it. Don't be greedy. I'm not very really sharing these guys. Cream in your coffee. I love cream in my coffee. Look at that. Oh, did you notice a big blob going there? That was thick and creamed. I also put in there. Looking very, <laughs> very uh, decadent. Hey guys, I'm gonna wrap this video up and uh, I'm gonna enjoy my coffee. You can hear Arv on the skill saw, I think. That is, mate. I like coffee. I have one coffee a day, and that with cream, and that's it. That's a fantastic coffee. I hope you enjoyed my clip. Hey, thank you very much for following my channel. If you're still watching, well, well done making it to the end. Most people get a bit bored and, and they, yeah. Uh, Sort of like, you know, fast forward it or get the hell out of them. I can understand that. It'd be pretty boring just listening to us old blokes talk about our lives and stuff around here. But those of you that still come along, I know it's nothing flash, but that is my life. That is what it is, and I'm sharing it with you. For how long I'll keep on doing these videos, I don't know. I guess I'll stop doing the day that I get bored with it. But for now, I enjoy the process. So, thank you very much. Also, thank you to patrons that uh, of my Patreon. And on that note, uh, if you are a patron, please keep your pledge right down low to what's really within your means. Don't give more than you know than you should. And if you're not a patron, have a look at jumping on board. But like I said, if you're like a young family or somebody who hasn't got a lot, please keep it right down to the minimum two dollars a month. Because uh, whilst I really enjoy having that uh, income. I also want you guys to be having rich lives where you're putting food on the table for your own children, the people you love just as much as I am here. That's really it. Pretty good. Out there. Well, at least try and be good. If it can't be good, well, you know the story, as I've always said. Be careful. And I sincerely mean that. Be careful. Because a lot of shit goes wrong when you're not careful. I'll leave you with a saying from John Wayne. Life is hard. But when you're stupid, it's harder. That was a shit John Wayne impression, but the message is still there. <laughs> so, I guess what he's saying is, um, you know, think and be careful. That's my breakdown on that. See you later. <sighs> 10 out of 10, that coffee. So cool, we've got that window in there in the front.